welcome to episode 406 of the podcast devoted to the classic and sometimes not so classic genre cinema of yesteryear. I'm your writer, host, producer, Derek M. Cook, and I want to welcome you to, well, I'm going to call it a very special show. And I know that's kind of a punchline sometimes or a joke when there's a very special episode of a program somewhere. It usually means some sort of message aimed at the kids watching sitcoms or whatever. Anyway, I'm getting a little off track, and that's because my brain still a little jumbled because I'm still trying to put together my own thoughts about what I want to put into this episode of Monster Kid Radio. First of all, though, the song that we're playing right now, and you're going to hear it again at the end of the show, is the song theme from The Moistening. It is from the band Invisible Dracula. You can find them at invisibledracula.bandcamp.com. It's part of their four, excuse me, five song EP release called Invisible EP. I'll make sure there's a link in the show notes. And You know, if you've been listening to Monster Kid Radio for a long time, you might recognize or remember hearing this song when we used to do the Creature Casts Among Us like spinoff thing. Every month we try to do a show about Creature from the Black Lagoon. It didn't last very long just because of how things worked at the time, but this was the song that we used. And I wanted to play it this week because there's a lot of Creature from the Black Lagoon connections here with this episode. This is our tribute to the late, great Julie Adams. Again, if you've been listening to the show for a while, or if you are friends with me on Facebook or Twitter, or have run into me at all, or seen me at a movie theater, basically, I can't shut up talking about Julie. I can't shut up talking about Creature from the Black Lagoon. From the first time I saw it, which, honestly, I don't remember when it was, it's been my favorite film. And, you know, I, I like to think that because I can't remember the first time I saw it, it's just kind of always been part of who I am. It's kind of part of my DNA, who, who I've become as a monster kid, as monster kid X, as a podcaster, all of that. It's just part of who I am. And a big part of the reason for that is the performance of Julie Adams. If you've listened to the show again, you know that I love this actress. This woman is my favorite actress, period, hands down. She has broadened my horizons in terms of the kinds of movies that I enjoy watching. I am thrilled every time I see her on screen in anything, even if it's a very small part in something that she's brought in maybe for a cameo or a guest spot on a TV episode. Just, she's phenomenal. And unfortunately, um, she passed away earlier this month. We as Monster Kids, people who love these movies, you know, we, we don't get the opportunity to, to know or meet or, or even just shake the hand of or, or express our gratitude to a lot of the people that were involved in these films just because well, the films are older and, you know, some of these movies are 50, 60, 70 years old and the people involved just are no longer with us anymore. There are still some around, obviously. There's people like Rico Browning, who you're actually going to hear in this episode. He was able to give me a few minutes of his time to talk about Julie. So you're going to hear that here in a little bit. The people that you run into at Monster Bash or at autograph shows. And Julie Adams was one of those people as well who would be out there pressing the flesh, so to speak, meeting with her fans, participating in Q&As, in panels and presentations over the years. She even gave me a few minutes to do an interview for Monster Kid Radio. And this is something that happened a few years back at Monster Bash. And I'm going to include that interview near the end of this episode. So stay tuned for that. This is a bit of an interview that's a replay from a previous episode of the Creature Cast Among Us. I am have been putting together voicemails and audio messages that have been coming in and, and other feedback to the show from people who want to participate in this tribute episode that we're doing for Julie Adams. And because I've been kind of head down in that, I haven't really had an opportunity to process a lot of my own thoughts about this. And I'm going to try to do that here on the show. I'm going to ask you to bear with me as I go through it. I I suspect there's going to be a lot of starting and stopping and ums and uhs and getting lost in thought as I'm trying to put the best words together. I'll try to edit a lot of that out, but just bear with me, gang. Anyway, this episode is a little different than what we normally do. Obviously, we are paying tribute to an actress. So because of that, we don't have one specific film that Kenny can submit a famous Monsters of Filmland segment for. However, because Julie is such a big part of Creature from the Black Lagoon, Kenny did send in a segment talking about how Creature from the Black Lagoon was represented in Famous Monsters of Filmland. And then at the end of it, he does talk a little bit about Julie as well. So, 
you know what? We're going to get to that here in a second. We're going to start the show with that. And we are going to have a teeny tiny bit of feedback here in the show as well. It's primarily about Julie, but you'll hear Brenda here in a little bit as we go through the email that we have and, and some other messages. Normally, I play trailers on the show, trailers of monster movies. Well, Julie was really technically only in the one monster movie. Now, she did other genre films, but Creature's pretty much it. She did a lot of westerns and dramas and other things. She was fantastic in them. So this week on the show, instead of playing just random monster movie trailers, the trailers you're going to hear are all going to be from films in which Julie Adams appeared. And if you hear anything that strikes your fancy, I highly recommend you track them down. I haven't seen everything that she's done, but boy, do I want to. So if anyone knows where I can get my hands on a copy of 1957's Slaughter on 10th Avenue, I'd be eternally grateful. Anyway, why don't we go ahead and go to Kenny. Hello, Monster Kid Radio Heads. This is Kenny with a look at Famous Monsters of Filmland. For this Julie Adams tribute edition, we are going to see when her on-screen boyfriend, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, was featured in Famous Monsters. He was on the cover of Famous Monsters three times. The first time was Monster World No. 4 from June of 1965 in a painting by Vic Prezio. He appeared again in FM 103 from December of 1973 in a painting by Basil Gogos. And soon thereafter, he was on the cover of 120 from October of 1975 in a painting by Harry Rowland. The first time the creature is mentioned in an article was in issue 5 from November of 1959, where the three creature movies were described. Most of the pictures were taken from the third film, The Creature Walks Among Us, and there were no pictures of Julie Adams. After the article, there was an ad where you could purchase Creature from the Black Lagoon in 8mm or 16mm. They say it was the complete movie, but at 160 feet and 320 feet respectively, they had to be a highlight reel. The 8mm was only $5.50, and the 16mm was $10.50. Quite a lot of money for those days. In FM 107 from May of 1974, the creature from the Black Lagoon was mentioned as part of a monster movie festival in Los Angeles. There were two photos, including an action shot with the creature carrying Julie Adams. Here's what was said about this classic movie. This is one of the most famous movies of the 50s and was directed by one of the two men most responsible for the shape and feel and look of the science fiction movies in the 1950s, Jack Arnold. The other is, of course, Roger Corman. The storyline is classic in its simplicity, being, like King Kong, a variation on the Beauty and the Beast theme. The direction is straight line like most of Arnold's films. Yet again, like most of Arnold's work, has a grip on the mystery and power inherent in the storyline. Several sequences are masterly designed, like when the Gill Man first encounters Julie Adams, or the death of Richard Denning, or the climax. The scene of the Gill Man staring upward silently through the bars in the tank on the boat is eerie in the extreme. Arnold seems to almost instinctively see and feel the power of the ideas in his film, of the mysterious past in conflict with the present, and doomed to lose and communicates this to his audience. The design of the creature suit itself is terrific. It is so very obviously and correctly what a half-man, half-fish monster should look like that comic book artists and other makeup men have had a terrible time in the years since this movie's release making their own sea beast look like anything but the creature from the Black Lagoon. I had the opportunity to meet Julie Adams three times, twice at Monster Bash and once in Monster Palooza. Her joy and love of her fans was infectious, and she will be missed. I'll never forget the PowerPoint presentation I saw at Monsterpalooza, which highlighted her entire career, of which the creature was just a small part. Rest in peace, Julie. We love you. Away all boats! Captain Jebediah S. Hawks, I request permission to come aboard, sir. The true life saga of a floating legend and its heroic crew, starring Jeff Chandler as Captain Hawks. He didn't get that Navy cross sitting on his bucket in Washington. But for your own peace of mind, I'd suggest you try to forget that you were recently captain and master of a ship in the Merchant Marine. 
adjust to the fact that I am captain of the Belinda. What Hawks wants is a battleship with a top-notch crew. What he gets are a bunch of raw recruits who can barely swim. We all want things our own way. I wanted command of a cruiser instead of this. The Belinda's going to get me that cruiser by being the top APA in the fleet. The men have been coming unglued from too many months at sea. They'd lost their combat efficiency. They needed something to fix their hate on so that they'd stop fighting among themselves. The captain gave it to them. Now hear this. This is the captain speaking. In a couple of minutes or less, you're going to get the chance of your lives to do some shooting. Now, Hawks and his recruits are about to show why they've become the most feared fighting unit in the Pacific. This is Sam Maroney. I was calling about Julie Adams today. Actually, Julie holds an ex a special place in my heart because as a journalist, she was one of the very first celebrities I ever interviewed. And it was a very interesting experience because Julie was in town, which was St. Louis at the time, for a dinner theater production. And the publicity director for the theater invited me and Julie out to lunch so I could interview her. And where they took us for lunch, it wasn't a, a sit-down restaurant per se, but it was a cafeteria that was very famous in St. Louis at the time. It wasn't your standard low-brow cafeteria. It was very high-end. But anyhow, I digress. I was behind Julie in line, and I was watching her take things from the serving tables, and she took big items like beef stew and this big, thick bread and big, heavy desserts. And I thought, my gosh, that is nothing that a, a regular actress would eat. And I just, that just made me love her even more because I, I thought, well, here's somebody who's not spoiled and she's, she's a regular person just like the rest of us. And we had a very pleasant conversation. She posed with some pictures and, you know, it was very, it was fascinating because back in the seventies, there wasn't so much film history and it was very interesting to hear her talk about being a contract player at Universal Studios. Of course, we talked about the creature. You know, her famous science fiction film, but it was just interesting to hear her stories about being a working actress on the Universal lot. So, you know, Julia had a very special place in my heart for a variety of reasons, but she was a very nice person, and she could not have been nicer. Hey, Derek, this is Dr. Dan Green calling in to leave some thoughts and remembrances of Julia Adams for your podcast. I was really saddened to hear that she had passed away and had hoped that it wasn't true, but of course it was. I uh, first met Julie at Monster Bash, probably back around 2001. I remember I went for two or three years in a row, and uh, both she and Ben Chapman were always guests there during those years. Both of them just some of the nicest folks you could always meet. Julie was always, always friendly, always a smile and a pleasure to talk with, and so good with the fans. Uh, lots of stories about uh, her time in Hollywood and Creature from the Black Lagoon, always patient with people and patient with me. She did a real nice interview with me, and, and that was that was really good early in my career as a horror host. I haven't seen a whole lot of her work outside of Creature from the Black Lagoon. A couple of movies come to mind that I have seen, of course, Black Roses, the rock and roll horror movie, heavy metal horror movie, and uh, a, a Vincent Price movie during my countdown of film called Catch Fire that was directed by Dennis Hopper that had Vincent Price in it also. I would like to have asked her about that, but I wasn't aware of that movie back when I last saw her, which was in the early 2000s. But anyway, my condolences to her family. Julie was a great actress, and she'll always be remembered fondly, especially for her role in Creature from the Black Lagoon. So anyway, thanks, and... Um, Here's to Julie. Hi, Derek and Monster Kids. This is Ron Adams with the Monster Bash Convention out near Pittsburgh. And just calling uh, about Julie Adams. Uh, very tragic. Uh, it happens, and it's uh, it's very sad. We had her as a guest. I think, I think it was four times. And a class act all the way around. Julie was just a wonderful person. Thinking back, I think the first time we had her was in 03 with uh, Ben Chapman. I think that was the year. And then we had her with Rico uh, a couple of times. 
and I think it was Ben twice we had her at Monster Bash, and she was always smiling. And I can remember one time in particular, we were in the uh, what we call the green room right before Julie went on to do uh, a Q and A session, and she was just talking gushing about her grandkids, and what a wonderful uh, family lady she was just. So happy to be watching one of our grandkids uh, at that time. She was like the prime babysitter. And um, it just, she was such a touching, dear person. And always smiling, always happy, never a problem. And uh, she just was, really, she fit the, the word class. She was a classy lady and full of grace. That word doesn't seem to like it applies much to people anymore, but for her it did. She was full of grace. That was Julie Adams, and we're all going to miss her at Monster Bash. Hello, Derek. This is Dwight Kemper reporting on my own experiences with the late and great uh, Julie Adams. I had met her at two uh, different horror conventions, the one down in Florida and also Monster Bash, and she was a delightful woman both times. Uh, I particularly remember how beautiful her son was, especially in helping her with, uh, oh, taking care of the everyday business of signing autographs and things. And I do remember how she and her son uh, worked very well together. And and her son was the one who suggested the join me for a swim memento on on my autographed picture. Uh, I was also lucky enough to get her autobiography And she also included a CD of the Creature from the Black Lagoon themes. A very lovely woman, uh, very easy to talk to. I remember that she and Rico Browning worked very well together on stage when they were uh, taking questions uh, during uh, their talk and about the days of swimming in the Black Lagoon, as it were. It just seems that As I myself get on in years, it seems that all the people that I know from my childhood and so on are just sort of falling by the wayside, and it's always sad when it happens, but particularly when it's someone that you've actually spoken with. All I can say is uh, it was wonderful meeting the creature's love interest and also the creature. I know Rico Browning is still here, so... Good luck to you, Rico. Being a monster kid these days gets harder and harder. But she was a wonderful woman and very pleasant to talk to. I particularly remember that uh, Julie Adams was very pleased when I asked her about Kolchak the Night Stalker and her performance in Mr. Ring. With a sparkle in her eyes, she pointed to the autobiography that I just purchased and said that there's a whole chapter of that in there. A lovely woman. So to all of you monster kids out there, when you go to these conventions, cherish the people that you're talking to. You never know how long they're going to be around and how soon they will once again be called back into the arms of death to be in the afterlife, as it were. But remember, no matter what, they're still alive on the silver screen and in HD on your television set. Take care, monster kids, everywhere. This is Dwight Kemper, signing off. May all of your crimes be perfect ones. Goodbye. Julie Adams. What can I say except that the one time we met, she was really nice, really courteous, and she was the same for all of her other fans that were in the line to meet and greet her at the showing of Creature from the Black Lagoon that I met her at. So, she was fabulous fabulous to her fans. She's in one of the greatest monster movies of all time. Certainly the greatest suit monster movie of all time, I think. And that's no knock on Godzilla. The creature from the Black Lagoon is awesome. And she was a great actress in dozens of other movies and in one of the most interesting television crossovers of all time in which she played a character in Mannix. And then 20 years later, played the character again in an episode of Diagnosis Murder, in which Mannix was a guest star. So it was like a a mystery that lasted over 20 years. 
And, and it may not have been exactly 20 years. It may have been a little more, a little less. But anyway, it was a long time, two unconnected shows. And Julie Adams was in both of them. Great actress and really nice to people. And that's a fine legacy for anyone. Julie, rest in peace. We'll miss you. This is Steve Sullivan signing off. Hello, Derek. And this is your fellow and creature fan, Russell, down in Florida. And uh, I wanted to call in and contribute what I could to your Julie Adams uh, Remembrance special episode. I just wanted to start with uh, what an amazing actress Julie was. And if there's a lot of monster kids out there like me, they're also cowboy kids at heart, too. So they were probably a lot of fans of, of Westerns, especially the old-time Westerns. And, of course, we know Julie was in a, an amazing load of those, and her turn in Bend of the River with Jimmy Stewart was just amazing. She was just awesome. Uh, all those old pictures, we love seeing those and, and just enjoying all those classic westerns. And, of course, uh, I'm a big Elvis fan, so her turn in Tickle Me uh, was, was great seeing her there. But, of course, it seems like the part that she's most remembered for, which is most special to us, is, is one that she kind of had second thoughts about doing. She really didn't want to uh, take that part, as we found out later, but we're so glad that she did because she was just so amazing in The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And uh, what a special lady. You watch those westerns, and you see how she acted in that, and then you see how she acted in, in Creature from the Black Lagoon, and, and then her television turns when she was showing up on television specials throughout the rest of her years. Uh, you can see that she could she could play any part. She was looking equally amazing as glamorous in one, and in the next one, it would be like the girl next door. And she just seemed like a wholesome, down-to-earth lady. I wish, I wish that I could have met her in person. Uh, like you had the opportunity to, and that's something I'll I'll be sad for. As you know, I've talked to you before uh, and messaged you about uh, meeting uh, Rico, Rico Browning, of course, here in Florida. I've seen him a number of times now, and I've gotten to know him and his uh, daughter, and I always speak with him, and I just saw him not too long ago, uh, and I know I never take for granted that he's still around and he's still here. So I always see him, I always get autographs from him, and uh, always visit with his daughter and just to see how he's doing, how he's feeling. Uh, of course, you know, as as expected, he's getting up there in age and his health is deteriorating, but he's still showing up at the conventions and to see the uh, fans' faces when he comes. Old, young, uh, you know, our age is, is just amazing. I was afraid that I wouldn't get a chance to meet Julie because I know as she was getting older, I didn't think she'd make it to any conventions here or, or you know, to the state of Florida. So last year I said, this is it. I need to, uh, to do it. So I reached out to her website and, and ordered an autographed picture. And, uh, of course it was a creature from Black Lagoon picture. I got an email back from her son and, uh, he had said, you know, would you like this personalized? You can write anything you want. I was like, wow, it was really nice that uh, they even wrote back to me. So they, they made it out to me and the picture came and it, it's definitely one of my prized possessions. And just looking at, you know, what she wrote and her signature, she didn't show signs of age in her signature, if you can understand what I mean. it's It was smooth and just beautiful handwriting and, and a great picture, and I'm glad that I have that, you know, at least if I never got to meet her, that I, that I have that to keep. You know, we make it up to Silver Springs, to where they filmed a lot of the underwater sequences, and of course we know that Julie did do the swimming, that they used a local person that worked with Rico, but that doesn't make it any, you know, any less special. It, it's such an amazing film, and it's such an amazing career that Miss Adams had. There's so many things I'd like to say, and, and you know, I know I'm on meandering and things like that, but uh, but I really wanted to reach out because these treasures of people that we have still they're still around, they're, they're fading, and we never want to miss an opportunity to show them how much they're loved and cared. What a big part of our lives they have been. We don't have a lot of people left from that special age. So that's why I always make it a point to, to talk to Rico and see him and uh, get, get his autograph again. I guess I can't have too many autographs of him. Uh, it, it's just just to be in the presence of, of that legend. It, it's just amazing. I know how much Miss Hannah's meant to you, Derek, and I thought of you as soon as I heard the news. I'm so glad that you got to meet her and spend some time with her. Derek, um, I hope that things are going okay with you health-wise, and I hope that your job hunting is going well, and I hope Brenda's well, and I never miss an episode, and I look forward to it every week. 
thanks for all you do, buddy. And uh, I'll keep listening. And uh, thank you so much for letting me talk and express some of my, um, some of my love for Miss Adams. Take care now. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to cut in here. And I'm probably going to do that a few times throughout this episode. Uh, thanks to everybody that has contributed so far. They all identified themselves. So, you know, you know who they were. And uh, just thank you for doing that. I wanted to respond specifically to something that Russell just said regarding Bend of the River. This movie is incredible. It is such a wonderful, phenomenal, epic, moving film. No, it's not a monster movie by any means uh, at all, despite the fact that it's got the leading ladies from not just Creature from the Black Lagoon, but Revenge of the Creature as well. That's right, Lori Nelson is also in this film. The first time I saw this movie was on the big screen at the Hollywood Theater about a year or so ago with Chris McMillan. He and I went down there to check it out, and man, it was gorgeous. And, you know, James Stewart, he is just so good in the movie, but so is Julie. And just if you haven't had a chance to see Bend of the River, even if you think you don't like Westerns, I highly recommend it. I'm going to play the trailer for that here, and then we're going to cut to the phone call that I had with Rico Browning about Julie. And then we'll just continue on with the show with more uh, messages from people who wanted to share thoughts about Julie. Starring James Stewart as Glenn McClintock, Indian fighter, trailblazer, a tower of strength in the wilderness. Come on, keep going! Yes, sir! Arthur Kennedy, whose smile hid the desperation of a hunted man. Julia Adams, who made the mistake of loving two men. Rock Hudson, who gambled with cards and with lives. You're smart. Anything you paid for that food will give you ten times what it cost if you bring it to the diggin'. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Any man can make a mistake. He can make lots of mistakes. But when he meets a woman and, and falls in love with her... Yeah, I see what you mean. I'll be seeing you, Glenn. You'll be seeing me. Every time you bet down for the night, you'll look back into the darkness and wonder if I'm there. And some night I will be. You'll be seeing me. <laughs> What we're doing on my podcast is a special episode about Julie Adams this week. I'd like to welcome you to Monster Kid Radio to talk a little bit about that. Do you remember the first time you met Julie Adams? Yes, I met her at Universal Studios when we were getting ready to uh, shoot the Creature movie. I was there at the makeup department getting the uh, suit built, and she came by a couple of times, and we talked. And then I took her to Catalina Island, taught her how to scuba dive, because she thought she was going to do the underwater sequences, but it turned out she couldn't do them because they shot the topside stuff in California on the back lot while we were shooting underwater at Wakala Springs near Tallahassee, Florida. So you did spend time with her during the production, or at least pre-production of the film? Yep, and then later, uh, you know, I go to these different shows. I've known her for about 60 years, and uh, we went to a number of shows together and signed autographs, and I met her sons, nice kids. After the wrap of Creature from the Black Lagoon, did you stay in contact with her? No, I, I talked to her now and then on the phone. I saw her once more when I went to California to work on a film, uh, Raise the Titanic, and uh, I met with her and had dinner, and we talked, and... She's a very nice lady. I've met her a couple of times over the years, and I agree. She was very, very nice and warm and welcoming. Did you do a lot of conventions with her? Quite a few. Uh, over a period of 60 years, we met uh, at different shows at different times. The many times that you did convention appearances with her, do you have any uh, stories or memorable experiences that you can share with us about Julie? 
No, other than that she was a very nice lady and she had her booth where she signed autographs and I had my booth and uh, every now and then people would want to get photographs of she and I together. So I'd go over to her table and we would stand up and let them take photographs. And sometimes they had these big, huge creature statues and we would go to those together and stand in front of them so the audience could shoot pictures. I'd like to go back to something you said a second ago about teaching her how to scuba dive. Had she not been very familiar with the water at that point? I have no idea. She she was a good swimmer, but she didn't know how to scuba dive. So, uh, as I said, we went to Catalina, and I spent about three four days over there with her and the cameraman, Scotty Welburn, and we taught her how to scuba dive, and uh, we had a picnic and just enjoyed ourselves. All on the company dime, I'm sure. (laughs) Well, somebody paid for it. I didn't. (laughs) That's the best kind of working vacation. Yeah. Did she take to the water pretty well then, you said? Yes, very much so. But you and her never had a scene together swimming because she was in Hollywood. That's correct. Do Do you wish you had a scene with her like that in the film? Well, I guess so. That film, The Creature from the Black Lagoon and the other two films are such iconic films. And I know a lot of it has to do with your performance as the Gill Man. So I want to thank you for that and being part of a franchise that has meant so much to so many people. Well, I enjoyed making the film, and I'm glad the audience enjoyed it. It was hard work, and uh, we worked in the wintertime on the first film. It was water temperature was 71 degrees, and the air temperature was 49 so it was pretty chilly. Wow. Uh, and that was how it was in Florida where you were shooting? Yes, at Rock Hall Springs. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, I originally called you about Julie, and I guess I would just like to wrap up by asking you if there's anything that you want the fans to know or remember about Julie Adams. I would say that she was uh, one of the nicest people I've ever known, and uh, she was lovely. And she was uh, just great to know. And uh, as I say, we worked on a number of uh, autograph shows together and got to know each other pretty well. So uh, I just enjoyed her very much. Hey, Derek. Uh, this is Taylor Gentry from the uh, Count Dragoon's Feature of Fright podcast. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I just want to say, I, you know, I, n- I never really get a chance to tell you, Derek. I, I really love the show. It's been a lot of fun listening the last few weeks. Um, there's actually a, a few movies that I've been able to go back and uh, some movies I've rewatched and movies that I've never seen before. Like a few weeks ago, you uh, you guys were talking about Fantastic Voyage. I actually just watched that for the first time. It's playing on uh, Turner Classic Movies. Uh, it was part of the 31 Days of Oscars. So I thought it was a really cool movie. I think my favorite thing about it was the art direction. But uh, I know uh, we lost somebody near and dear to us here in the Monster Kid community, Miss Julie Adams. Uh, Derek, I, to be honest with you, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying so. When I first heard the news about it, I mean, I mean, obviously my heart and prayers uh, went out to the Adams family, uh, but I was actually a little bit worried about you, buddy. I know that uh, Julie meant a lot to you, and as I'm sure she all, meant a lot to all of us Monster Kids. I know that uh, you shared a special friendship with her, and I hope you're doing all right, and uh, give my uh, best to Brenda. I know we've never actually met before, but I always uh, really like her segments on Monster Kid Radio. But uh, if you don't mind me chiming in for a second, now, of course, we all love Julie from uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, but one of my fondest memories of Julie Adams is actually the episode she did in Night Gallery. She was on season two, I believe. Uh, of course, if, if, if I got that messed up, you can uh, fact check me on that. But she was actually in this really interesting episode where she played uh, the reluctant wife of a, a con man who was uh, basically going down to a, a Catholic shrine in Mexico, I believe, to quote-unquote be healed because he basically lied about being uh, an invalid to uh, collect the insurance money. And uh, when he got down there, uh, he, of course, was quote-unquote miraculously healed, but then uh, it turns out he suffered at the hands of the wrath of God. (laughs) You know, Julie, her performance in that episode was really great. Of course, Night Gallery is a great show in case there's anybody listening out there that hasn't 
uh, had a chance to watch it. I highly recommend it. Really, really underrated show, I, I feel like, in terms of, like, the grand scope of the history of television. And, of course, be on the lookout for that particular episode with Julie Adams. She does a great job. It's wonderfully written, wonderfully directed, just the whole shebang. But, but anyway, I just thought I'd call and uh, kind of give my perspective on Julie. And we're certainly going to miss her. Her memory lives on through all the great films and the great uh, TV spots that we have uh, to watch on DVD and such. Derek, you rock, buddy. Keep up the great work, and uh, I will be tuning in very soon to uh, Monster Kid Radio, as always. Thanks, bud. Bye. So that voicemail uh, covered two things. It covered some thoughts about Julie, which we're going to get back to here in the show here in a moment. But because there were some other comments about other things that we've talked about here on the show, I wanted to just pop in and say, hey, Taylor, uh, yes, Fantastic Voyage is a phenomenal film, and I knew it was playing on TCM because as it was playing, or maybe right afterwards, Josh Kennedy texted me and started raving about how great the movie was, so I knew he had just watched it. So um, I actually have it on Blu-ray here now. I got it really cheap, and it's awesome. Mm. So uh, anyway, uh, there was something else that he mentioned in the show, or excuse me, in the voicemail. It was not about me, or Julie. Mm. It's about you, babe. That Hello. he you. Oh. Well, that's <laughs> nice. That's very kind. I wanted to make sure that we got you on the show um, mm. for some feedback because not just Taylor or, or Count Drahoon mm-hmm. uh, commented recently, but we also received, I've actually gotten two Facebook messages now from people talking about how much they enjoy you and I together on the show. Aw, that's so, good, because it's going to be that way for as long as we live, you and I together. No, I don't say we're doing the show for as long as we, That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to edit it so it sounds like you just said we're going to be doing the show forever. Well, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I needed that laugh. This is actually kind of a, uh, a tough episode to get through, so thank I you. I can tell, <laughs> yes, you've been having a really hard time. And I'm sorry. That's, you know, like I said at the very top of the show, I um, have been processing everybody else's stuff coming in and making sure the show, and all that, that I haven't really had a chance to process me very much. So, mm. you know, it's just, just a thing. Um, I mean, not that... Processing other people's stuff. Has no. Been. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm so happy that people want to use Monster Kid Radio as a forum mm-hmm. to express their appreciation and respect and, and all that for all right. things truly. I, I, I love that. I, I will let people talk about my 50s girlfriend. <laughs> including Wednesday. <laughs> including Wednesday, who you may or may not have just heard. Anyway, you know, I'm starting to ramble again. We got all these voicemails, but we also got an email from Mark Matsky, former podcaster, friend of mine. He was on the Monster Bash special uh, last year. I met him at Monster Bash for the first time. Super cool guy. Uh, the podcast that he used to do was awesome. And now he's with Small Town Monsters, which just look it up on Facebook. It's really cool. It's all about cryptozoological stuff. And it's just really neat. So anyway, he wrote in about Julie. I'm sorry if we have any interruptions. Wednesday has decided to land on my lap. He says, Derek, if this is too late, oops, we're bumping wires. I apologize. Wednesday has made a home in my lap and is touching a wire, maybe a microphone wire. So if there is noise during this, I am so sorry. But Wednesday has deemed it her time to purr. Derek, if this comes too late, no worries. I'll never forget our first Monster Bash. It was 2014, and my son Andy was 10 years old and very much aware of who Julie Adams was. He worked up the courage to go see her at her table and got a signature. They talked for a bit. It was incredibly unbusy. And finally, she asked how he would like her to sign his lobby card. Andy was puzzled and couldn't decide. With great warmth, she finally suggested, how about I just write, love Julie Adams? You could have knocked Andy over with a feather. And that day I learned that one of cinema's most gorgeous leading ladies was equally beautiful inside and out. Thanks for the opportunity to share this memory. It's extremely special to me slash us. Mark Matsky. Small Town Monsters. And then there's a picture. They did include a picture, and I'm sure that picture's available on Mark's Facebook page. That is also the year that I met her for the first time. Yes. Uh, Mark and I actually were both there at the same time, and I 
think I remember seeing him, or at least Andy at one point, but we hadn't really communicated on Facebook, mm. so you know, he, he used to do a lot of kaiju stuff, so that's mm. kind of my connection to him. Yeah. Um, but that's the outfit that she was wearing when I met her. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, that was yeah. the first time I met her. And, and how did that meeting go? Well, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> as somebody who got to witness your husband basically <laughs> lose his mind. Oh, and, and, honey. You know, uh, to meet this woman that he repeatedly calls his 50s girlfriend, despite the fact that we have an incredibly awesome marriage, <laughs> uh, that, that we don't, we're not open with it, you know? So, I mean, it's not like, I don't know, what did you think when I got to meet her? I felt really bad for you because you were so nervous. So I felt terribly bad for you. You were really sweating. It, it they had her back in that little hallway where it was so crowded everything was so warm and you were so anxious and sweating and uh she hadn't like there wasn't really anybody at her table that i remember anyway you would sort of been hovering somewhere else saying oh no i'm gonna do it i'm gonna oh no no no! i'm too nervous <laughs> i'm gonna do it no no what if i sound dumb <laughs> so Oh no, is this painful for you? No, it's just... When we go to events together and I'm trying to like get the attention of somebody or you know try to be cool, a lot of times you will have to remind me to stop looking like a creeper. <gasps> what? Because oh. I look like a creeper. <laughs> Did I say you look like a creeper? No, not this time. But in the past, I've just kind of hovered. Yes. You know, trying to like look for an opening or just kind of make my presence normal there and it doesn't come off because i'm such a big guy anyway yes. <laughs> and you're really hovering over the edge of a table yeah. there yes but this time i don't think it looked like that it was just uh i was stalling it was kind of i had to put you out of your misery <laughs> i couldn't yeah. watch you suffer anymore so i think i walked over to her table and said something like Hello, uh, I'd really like to introduce you to my husband. He's very nervous because he's in love with you. Did I tell her you called her your 50s I girlfriend? I don't think we ever dared tell her okay, good. that I call her my 50s girlfriend. And I probably shouldn't, you know, if I was, mm. but yeah. whatever. Your 50s girlfriend maybe is the character she played. Or no, it's just her in general. I, I don't... You know, can we move on? Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's my memory. And then you started talking to her, and she's a wonderful woman. And oh, she was fantastic. Her son, Mitch, was there. Yes, And was Mitch fantastic. was really cool. Um, yeah. We made sure that we plugged the book, that she had a new book. Uh, oh, that's the autobiography. right. And he had asked that we make sure we mention it. So we did, so people will hear that when I play that interview. And... Was it the Christmas before that I got her signature on a photo for Christmas for you? No, it was. It, I think it was the book. I think you actually got the book for me because I had already read it by the time I met yes, her. Yes, and she had an option where she would sign the book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I did chat with her, mm -hmm. uh, and and it was it was very nice, and very yes. pleasant. Yes. I probably lost about 10, 20 pounds waiting to chat with her because, man, I was sweating. It was hot back then. Well, I was also super nervous. You were so nervous. Oh, I felt man. so bad for you. Well, and it was just getting worse and worse. It was over so quick. It just yes. like I have no memory of, like, the memories are kind of jumbled. I mean, I have the recording, yes. and the recording's only about five minutes or so. Yes. But I know that I talked to her longer than that. Yes, was it? So there was one time where you met her at a table, but was that the time you did the interview as well? Well, I did the interview at her table at Monster Bash, and I know that I went back more than once because I mm, had things for her to sign. Yes. She signed uh, a lobby card or, or I forget if it was a lobby card for the movie Hollywood Story, mm. which I really like, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But when she looked at it, she looked at the image of her on the lobby card and she's like screaming because, you know, oh, scary moment. And she looks at me and she says, she looks like she could use some help, huh? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, yes, you're so right. I'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, she was just amazing. Yes. And, uh, I'm glad you got to meet her and interact with her. I also am glad that you have a relationship with her son. He was 
fantastic at taking care of her and having her best interests at heart. I'm glad I got to meet her because she meant so much to you. Yeah, and I've actually spared you um, watching a bunch of her movies <laughs> this past week or so. I've been watching it while you've been at work. Mm. I'll put on one of her westerns or something while I'm doing laundry. Mm. Um, watching some that I haven't watched yet because I, I haven't watched them all. Oh. But... Yeah, I mean, she's a great actress, and a lot of the people that are saying in the voicemails, beautiful inside and out, just like Mark said. Yeah. She was so warm and friendly, and do you remember the second time I met her? And when I came home, I was super jazzed. Do you remember why? Uh, did she put her arm around you or something? She didn't put her arm around me, but she grabbed my arm, like for a handshake, and then put her other hand up on my forearm. And looked at me in my eyes and said, oh, we're old friends then, huh? No, oh, that's oh, right. My God, I could have died right there. Oh, yes. You're lucky. I'm I, very lucky. Yeah, I, I really am. Why don't we go ahead and get back to some of the other voicemails that have been called in? Oh, okay. Um, thanks for being part of this episode, yes. Brenda. Hey, so actually, uh, I'm not going to go to a voicemail yet because... I forgot to address something when I was recording with Brenda earlier and uh, Taylor brought up Julie Adams episode of Night Gallery and I wanted to talk about that just kind of briefly. Uh, that was in season two. The episode was called The Miracle at Camafeo. And what's interesting about that particular episode, first of all, it's great. Uh, Julie does a wonderful job. She is one of the lead characters in this thing, and she's playing Gay Melkor, who is the wife of Joe Melkor. They are doing the whole scammy thing, like Russell said. Here's what's interesting, though. Joe Melkor was played by Ray Danton, who was Julie Adams' husband at the time. And I thought that was really interesting. In fact, Julie and, and Ray had worked together off and on, and they actually made a horror movie in the 70s called Psychic Killer. Ray actually directed that film, and Julie Adams has one of the lead roles. So I'm going to play that trailer, and then we're going to go to some more voicemails. The human mind possesses vast and totally unexplored resources of psychic energy. Every object has an energy force, an aura around it. If the full force of this psychic energy is mastered, it can turn the human mind into the deadliest weapon in the universe. The energy force in any human can be controlled. It's possible that Mr. Masters has so learned to control the art of releasing energy from his living body and that this energy or spirit if you will is malevolent mean angry and this spirit goes out to murder those whom he thinks have done him harm meet arnold masters Arnold is very imaginative. He can think of millions of ways to murder, and he just might try them all. The Psychic Killer. I understand that these were accidental deaths, because there's no other logical explanation, is there? No. Not yet. Hi, this is Dan Day Jr. I'm sure many people will be calling in, giving tributes to Julie Adams, and talking about what a great person she was, which she was whether they had met her and how nice she was to everyone at film conventions. And, of course, the creature from the Black Lagoon. But I would like to say she had an incredible career, just even beyond the creature from the Black Lagoon. She co-starred with Charlton Heston, John Wayne, Rock Hudson, Tyrone Power, Glenn Ford, Elvis Presley. She starred in some of the most well-known classic TV shows of the period, She's a very accomplished actress, had a far greater range than I think most people expect or know. And uh, hopefully, if there is any good thing that can come from her passing, is maybe more people will venture out and try to find more of her work and not just think of her as being in Do the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I realize how important that is to all of us, but she was just an accomplished overall actress all the way, all the way through. 
and a very beautiful person inside and out. Thanks. It's Alan Trump from St. Louis calling. Just wanted to put my comments in about uh, the Julie Adams Memorial broadcast that you're doing here. I think it's a wonderful thing. Julie did come over to St. Louis one time. Actually, it was at Edwardsville, Illinois, Wildy Theater for a special retrospective showing of Creature from the Black Lagoon. My wife and I went and had a great time, and we got to hear her talk about the film and, and sit in. And I did go ahead and get an autographed picture from her. And when I went up there, I figured, well, everybody asks her about the Creature from the Black Lagoon, but I'm going to ask her about a different movie. So I said, Julie, how was it working with Dennis Hopper on the last movie? And she was always a courteous, kindly woman, and she would say nothing bad about it. She just kind of rolled her eyes a little bit and said, wow, that was an adventure. And now that I've looked it up, I think I need to see this movie, even though some folks consider it unwatchable. Some people consider it sort of an existential film like El Topo. But uh, looking it up on IMDb, not only does it have Julie Adams and Dennis Hopper, it also has Dean Stockwell, Tony Basil, who sang the Mickey song, and director Sam Fuller. So maybe I do got to check this one out. I feel like I'm cutting in a lot more than I originally planned. I apologize for that. I hope you're not getting tired of my voice. I just wanted to uh, second basically what's being said by a lot of people here, that Julie Adams did so much more than Creature. I love Creature from the Black Lagoon. Do not get me wrong. But there's so much more. Uh, you know, we had talked about the movie Underwater City here on the show in the past a few years ago with Steve Sullivan. I've always wanted to talk about the movie Hollywood Story, which was a movie directed by William Castle. Yeah, that William Castle. And there's just so much out there that I can't wait to go and explore. She was so good in so many of the Westerns and the dramas and all of the TV work that she did. She did an episode of One Step Beyond. She did an episode of Suspense. Both of these things are excellent. So I really encourage you to seek out some of this other work that she did. Of course, don't forget about Creature. Don't, don't forget about that one. Uh, we're now going to hear from David Schechter who's been a guest on the show before, and then, well, some more folks. I was lucky to know Julie Adams for many years, starting with our Creature from the Black Lagoon connection. Needless to say, you know Julie's connection with that movie. Well, my monstrous movie music company recorded the score for that picture. I also helped edit Julie's memoirs, The Lucky Southern Star, and worked with her on a number of other projects, including a short film done by her two sons, Mitch and Steve. The thing that always struck me about Julie was her positive attitude towards almost anything. This positive attitude did not come from a life without trials and tribulations, because Julie certainly had more than her share of those. Instead, it came from a desire to try to get the most out of life. Julie once told me something that I will never forget, and that is, because life can be so difficult at times, you have only two options. One is to just give up and the other is to fight on and to continue on the best you can. And Julie did that by focusing on the good things. This didn't mean she wasn't aware that the bad things had happened, and she certainly learned from those, but she would not focus on them. She would leave them in the past where they belonged, and she would move onward and upward to her next challenge. That positive attitude is one of the reasons that she had so many friends and so many people who loved her because when she was out in public, her fans saw a celebrity who was very different from a lot of the other ones. Julie acted like she really wanted to be with you, that she was enjoying her time with you, and that's simply because she was. It wasn't an act. That was Julie. She wanted to get the best out of life at all times, so regardless of what had happened in the past, she was positive and upbeat and believed in a positive future, and in many cases, she got that positive future probably because of that attitude. She was a warm, loving, caring, upbeat, very funny, and very intelligent lady who was also one of the finest actors of her generation. And that's why so many people are missing Julie Adams today. Hey, Derek. It's Chris Franklin from the Fire and Water Podcast Network and the Supermates. And uh, I just wanted to call in and say a little bit about uh, Julie Adams, who uh, I know you're doing your Julie Adams 
episode, and uh, I know you're a huge fan of her, huge fan of Creature from the Black Lagoon. I am also an admirer of hers. It's it's strange. She is such a beautiful woman, but she was so classy that you almost feel bad about thinking she's like, like you know, sexy in a night, even a 1950s kind of way because she's so classy. She's so just pretty. I mean, she's like pretty. You know, it's like. But she was a good actress, and she was a great actress, and and the character she played, a K, was. She was a scientist in the 1950s. She had agency, the term everybody likes to use nowadays. She had agency, you know. She, Yeah, you know, she got carried around by the monster. It was the 1950s, but she was a scientist in her own right, put her career before getting engaged, you know. So, you know, getting married anyway. So, you know, she was she was ahead of the curve back then. So, and she was great in other things. I'm a big fan of the Andy Griffith show. I wish she'd been on there more. She was on that one episode where she was a nurse. I really would have liked to have seen her return and been a recurring romance for Andy Taylor. She may have been Miss Andy Taylor. Who knows? Mrs. Andy Taylor. But, yeah, it, you know, 92 years old is a nice long life. But, yeah, it's still too early. And uh, I'm so glad you got to meet her uh, and you got to interview her and have her on Monster Kid Radio. That was great. I never got the chance. I did get to meet Riku Browning a few months ago, which was great. But, uh, yeah, you know, just saddened to uh, hear of her passing. You know, she left us all this work that we can uh, still enjoy, and she left a cultural impact. Uh, and how many people can say that, right? And it was a positive cultural impact, entertainment, entertained a lot of people. So uh, so thanks for the opportunity to uh, to join in on the Julie Adams Love Fest, and uh, keep it going at Monster Kid Radio. Bye. Hey, Derek, this is Steve Turk calling. I know you wanted feedback on um, the Julie Adams since her passing recently, and uh, – it's interesting because I know how a lot of people like yourself really, really cared for and loved Julie Adams and her work and things like that. And I really appreciate her work, but I don't have that same emotional attachment that a lot of um, the fans do of Creature the Black Lagoon and um, Julie Adams and her, and like I said, with her body of work and that kind of stuff. But I want to share how I first saw Creature the Black Lagoon because it is one of my favorite movies. And I was lucky enough when I was younger in um, junior high, our school was doing periodically, they were doing movies, which you could stay after school for, pay a couple of dollars, and you got to see them. And one of them was Creature the Black Lagoon in 3D. So they set it up in the auditorium, and then we got to watch it in the th- in, you know 3D. A bunch of us that were like elementary school, junior high age, stayed after and watched it. And it was a packed house. Everybody was just enthralled with the movie. And, of course, then you see Julie Adams in there, and she does a great job. I mean, looking, uh, she looks lovely. She's highly intelligent. And I always remember that one scene where she's smoking a cigarette and then she throws it overboard, you know, all these people in the audience going, you shouldn't smoke, it's bad for you, which I find kind of funny that the guys are smoking, nobody says a word, but when she does, it's, it's kind of like the, you know, it was an interesting thing, you know, at a child age mentality, I guess. I guess because she was younger, more closer to our age than the rest of the cast. It's just one of those fond memories of being able to see it the right way in a packed house in 3D, and you get to enjoy that experience. And it, it was really, it was really good. And she helped one of those. She was one of those key parts to help make that movie the classic that it is. And I know a lot of people are. Um, my wife and people say to me, well, why do you go to Monster Bash or why do you go to the Mid-Atlantic Nostalgia Convention and things like that to see these actors and actresses, movie makers and that kind of stuff? And it's because a lot of them from this classic age have passed and those that are still alive, it's that chance for you to meet somebody that when you're in that, your childhood age, you got to grow up and some people, like I say, that are heroes or whatever, but I just like to look at it and give them the chance to tell them how much I appreciated their work. And then you get to hear those behind-the-scenes stories and those kind of things, which I never was able to do with Julie Adams. But from hearing feedback from other people, like yourself included, um, she seemed like she was always a class act, was genuinely in, enthralled with her fans, and um, just embraced how much that role meant to people over the decades. 
one of those things I'm just glad that people get to know that their work is appreciated because there's so many times where one of these artists, these actors or actresses die and, and they never knew how much their work became beloved. And it, for generations and generations, because then it was just the work to do, and then you move on to the next project and so on. And I'm glad that she was able to find out how much she was appreciated and how she will be missed by a lot of people, you know, in the world. And I'm going to thank you for giving us, everybody this opportunity to leave a little feedback. And again, I'm, you know, for her family and everything, I'm really sorry for their loss. And I hope that I'm going to keep their family in my prayers that they're able to cope through this and get through this and stuff like that. Right. Hey, Derek, this is Richard, the Monster Movie Kid. Julie Adams was one of those people who has been on my wish list for the longest time. One of those people that I really hoped I'd get a chance to meet at a convention like Monster Bash. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But we still have her films and her television appearances that we can continue to enjoy for many years to come. Creature from the Black Lagoon has always been one of my favorites. I had a chance to see it for the first time when I was in eighth grade. I think it was in 1982. And on the big screen in 3D. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I was hooked and it has been a favorite of mine ever since. Julie Adams is always popping up on television as well. It seems like I knew who Julie Adams was before I really knew who she was. I would recognize her, but I never quite connected her to the creature from the Black Lagoon until years later. And then it was kind of like, oh, okay, I've been watching her for years. You know, her passing, it came suddenly. And again, I always hoped that maybe she'd be added to the guest list at Monster Bash. I knew that she was getting older. Unfortunately, so many of our of our favorites from our youth are passing away. But like I said, we've got her films that we will continue to to enjoy for as long as we have a DVD or a Blu-ray player or as long as there's a streaming service somewhere that is offering up classic monster movies, we'll get a chance to enjoy them. Rest in peace, Julie Adams. John Wayne is McHugh. And this time, for the first time, he's a cop. McHugh's in big trouble. Two million dollars in junk is missing. Hold it! And somebody's trying to hang it on McHugh. I got a message from Patty Samuels. He's sorry he blew it on McHugh, but he rang it up with boil. You're off the investigation, Lieutenant. Pending review. Oh, wait, think about it. Frank, let him go. He was never part of the team anyway. I don't like you. I never did. A bear. I don't like bears. That gun's not licensed, McHugh. Neither am I. Santiago's got company from out of state. Santiago's collecting a murder squad. Suspects include lifelong friends. Evidence points to police brass. And the payoff is a trap for McHugh. All right, man. Come on out. We know you're in there. McHugh's got a job. If he can't do it with the law, he'll do it beyond the law. All right, bring him out. McHugh, the cop nobody can stop. Not even the cops. You've never seen John Wayne before. Like this. McHugh from Warner Brothers. Hey, Derek. It's Bill Mize down here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And thank you so much for allowing us to share our stories about the wonderful Julie Adams. Like you, The Creature from the Black Lagoon was one of my favorite movies. And in April of 2016, I had the opportunity to meet Miss Adams. I live on the left-hand coast of Florida, and she was appearing on the right-hand coast, and it takes about four hours to drive over there. I wasn't going to stay overnight or anything. This was just a one-day trip. So I put on a tie, got a shave, 
I wanted to look really nice for Miss Adams, and I drove the four hours over to the other side of the state. I paid my admission, and there she was. Now, of course, Julie was small and frail and at the table with a young man who turned out to be her son. It was like someone's Nana had just showed up at a convention unexpectedly. But she was regal. She was polite. She was charming. She was a true Southern lady in the best sense of the word. She was patient with my questions. She signed the poster that I had brought from home and graciously posed for photos with a 56-year-old monster kid. I will never forget that day, and I will never forget her. And every time I watch the movie, I will think of her. Thank her for everything that she has done for us monster kids, and thank you for this tribute show to her. I look forward to listening to it. Take care. This is Chris Walton, regular listener to Monster Kid Radio, just calling in about Julie Adams. Julie Adams, lovely name, lovely lady. News of her passing kind of hit me hard this week. You know, aside from her obvious good looks, she had a presence about her that always made her stand out in a role. The kind of actress she enjoyed watching work. I remember her in many genre roles and westerns. She was on The Rifleman. Uh, I think she was actually sent to the gas chamber on Perry Mason. Uh, was a lush on Night Stalker. But I remember that southern drawl on the Andy Griffith show when she played a possible love interest to Andy. But of all those roles, I'll always remember her as Kay Lawrence on The Creature from the Black Lagoon, a movie I just never tire of watching. I plan to watch it this weekend on Spinguli, but a part of me will feel a little deep sadness at her loss. A nice woman I really wish I could have met. Rest in peace, Julie Adams. Hi, Derek and Brenda. This is Alistair Hughes, author of Infogothic, an unauthorized graphic guide to Hammer Horror. Like so many others, I was greatly saddened to hear of the passing of Julie Adams. I'm woefully unqualified to say anything worthy about the lady, but would at least like to offer some observations I made when I watched Creature, pretty much immediately after hearing the sad news. While many horror movie actresses played vamps, Julie played Vam, value-added material, in the lovely form of her character, Kay Lawrence. And I mean this respectfully. Putting her physical beauty reluctantly to one side, Kay is so engaging that if the Gilman hadn't been so masterfully realised, she might have eclipsed him altogether. Kay does science. She's in a happily de facto relationship, and when we first meet her, she is driving a speedboat with macho men as mere passengers. Think about all of that in the context of 1954, if you possibly can. As the film unfolds, we see that Kay is that magic team member, the one everyone hopes to have. She's the enabler, the empath, the peacekeeper, all the while raising everyone's spirits with her relentless positivity. At the same time, she is clearly fearsomely competent in her field, but never seeks the limelight, apparently content to do a job as well as she can and have fun doing it. Kay never complains about the hostile environment the Rita journeys into. She's excited to be there, and fascinated by the natural beauty which surrounds them. Julie Adams put all of that on screen. I honestly struggle to believe that that depth of characterization was ever in the script. And of course, she also wore cinema's most famous white swimsuit. Sorry, Ursula Andrus. But at the same time managed to create a whole new template for future, gutsy, accomplished, and beautiful genre cinema heroines. Rest in peace, Miss Adams. No commitment, Stacy. There can't be. I gotta stay free. No commitments. Universal International recreates the passionate chapters of the best-selling novel T.C. Cromwell on the screen as One Desire. Starring Ann Baxter as the notorious Tacy, who tried to turn her back on her reputation. Rock Hudson as Clint Saunders, who'd gamble on anything, even love. Julie Adams as Judith, rich, spoiled, but she offered a shortcut to success. The bank, the senator, they're my future. 
They can give me what I've been after all my life. You've been saying so yourself. I thought you'd understand. I understand, all right. There's nothing skinny about her. Tacey forgot that her fierce love hunger for the youngsters she had taken in could not erase the ugly shadow of her past. And you have been a dance hall girl since 16. And still you consider yourself fit to care for two children. How dare you talk to me that way? Miss Cromwell. I took Celia in when no one else wanted her. Gave a home to two children who'd never had one. Scrubbed for them, fed them. Gave them the most that anyone could give a child. Care and affection. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm as much a mother to those two children as anyone here is to hers. You married me and you're going to stay married to me. So sneak around back alleys if that's the kind of man you are. Carry on in dark corners with that tramp. I'm sure she'll be more than willing. Why, Daisy, why? Why do people make such bad mistakes before they learn? How many times have I asked myself that question? Once again, thanks to everybody who contributed to this special episode of Monster Kid Radio. There's a lot more to be said that could be said about Julie Adams and her impact on so many of us and on me personally. And um, I'm, I'm going to take a moment to just say thank you to Julie and, and to her family. And yeah, just thanks. I, I don't know what else to say. I, I feel like a big part of what makes me um, a monster kid it's gone. Um, okay. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to say thank you. And uh, I look forward to watching many, many, many more of Julie Adams' films through the rest of my life. Uh, she, she really was something special. And uh, thank you to everybody who reached out to me and, and you know, the people that I talked with on Facebook and just the, the conversations that we've had about it. Uh, remembering having met her, you know, there were so many things that, like I said, could be said. Um, the last time I saw her was at a convention here in Portland, Oregon, and she had come in. She was a special guest. <laughs> when I found out that she was going to be at a guest here, and the way I found out was like this. I was at the Lovecraft Film Festival, and a guy who was a vendor there as a bookseller who was also organizing this upcoming convention. And, you know, he's a friend of mine. He told me that it's not 100% sure, but they are talking to one of the last remaining universal monster movie actresses about coming to their convention. So of course, you know, my, my brain immediately went to Julie Adams. And then as soon as it was finalized, it's like, wow, that's, that's amazing. So, Julie came to town. She actually did a appearance at a screening at the Academy Theater for Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's where she told me we were old friends. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Uh, the Q&A afterwards was a little disastrous, to be completely honest, because uh, I, I kind of came in there and said, you know, I, I'm this guy, I do podcasting, I love this film, I love this stuff, I, I've met these people, um, you know, I communicate with her son on, you know, via email. They gave me the okay to kind of come in and moderate a Q&A after the film. Uh, the theater was not really rigged very well for doing a Q&A. The microphone, there was one on the stage for Julie. And then the other microphone was actually placed in the middle of the theater. So, you know, I suppose we could have had people come up to the microphone to ask questions, that sort of thing. But people weren't there to see me and they were really kind of confused by my trying to direct them. And it just was kind of a mess. But Julie was a trooper. She had a grin the entire time. She was beaming. There were people there that she was willing to, to or excited to meet with and, and talk about Creature or Bend of the River or anything else that they wanted to. She signed so many things and took so many pictures with people. I did not take a picture with her there. My picture was the following uh, weekend, the following day, basically, at the horror convention here in Portland. And she was a guest there and I hung out at a table and, you know, 
said hi to Mitch and her and all that. And there was a panel that was set up for Julie Adams. And I think Barbara Steele was actually going to be on this panel as well. And I was going to co-moderate it with Chris McMillan. Well, there were some scheduling snafus and they combined that panel with women horror authors and they, they meshed it all together. And it was just kind of a, a weird mix. Uh, I ended up just sitting in the audience and, and let Chris kind of run the Q and a part of it and moderating the panel. And I mean, he, was awesome trying to balance the needs of both groups of people. And it was pretty cool. And afterwards, uh, Mitch and I kind of discussed what had happened and, uh, you know, it was all in all, it went fine. And it, it was, you know, a, a nice way to kind of see her for the last time. I wish I didn't have to say that. Um, so yeah, I, I guess, that's going to bring us to the end of the show. MonsterKidRadio.net is where you can find everything that you need to know about Monster Kid Radio, including our contact information, our email addresses there, our phone number is there. If you have any feedback for the show, please feel free to get a hold of us by emailing us at MonsterKidRadio at gmail.com or call the voicemail line and leave us a phone Leave us a message, I guess, at 503-479-5657. It's 503-4795-MKR. I'll make sure there's a link to a video that David Schechter has posted on his YouTube page where he's doing a presentation about Julie and the Black Lagoon. It's really fascinating. It's about an hour long. and It's pretty cool. So I'm going to make sure there's a link to that. And, yeah, um, maybe go watch Creature from the Black Lagoon if you haven't already done it. Uh, go go watch it and, and remember Julie. Um, I know that I will be watching that film soon. All original content of Monster Kid Radio is, a regis- is copyright. You know what? I'm just going to end this. You guys and gals know how this goes. Monster Kid Radio owns all of the original content except for what was contributed to the show, including the song theme from The Moistening that comes from the band Invisible Dracula. It's off their EP, Invisible Dracula EP, and you can find them at invisibledracula.bandcamp.com. Go check them out by following the link in the show notes over at monsterkidradio.net. I'm going to play one final trailer. Then I'm going to cut to the interview that I did with her a few years ago at Monster Bash. I believe it was 2014. It's a replay. Some of you may have already heard it, or this may be the first. Just listen to it, and then we'll play the song, and that'll be that. What's coming up next week? I don't know. Um, Lots to pick from, so just follow along at monsterkidradio.net, and you'll find out. Thanks for listening, everybody. My name's Derek Kim Cook. Ciao. No! No! Sheer stark terror grips you in underwater 3D in Creature from the Black Lagoon. The most terrifying monster of the ages rises from the sea, raging with pent-up passions. Making every man his mortal enemy, every woman's beauty his prey. Creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D, starring Richard Carlson and Julie Adams. Every horrifying scene leaps out of the screen right at you. A universal re-release rated G. Thank you so much for taking a few moments of your time to chat with me today. Uh, I'm with Monster Kid Radio. Monster Kid Radio. Oh, that's what right. Fun. So, and that's <laughs> uh, all we talk about is monster movies. So, of course, I have to ask Miss Julie Adams, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, actress. How's your show going today? How's the weekend treating you? Oh, everybody's been wonderful. I've had a um, met a lot of very nice people, and they all seem to like some of our movies here. So, uh, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Well, you've definitely given us, well, it's my favorite film. Really? I love Creature so much, and I'm actually going to get a chance to see it next weekend in my hometown on the big screen. What would you recommend I tell people if they've never seen Creature? How do I draw them in? (laughs) That it's a very good movie. (laughs) That sounds sort of corny, doesn't it? But I agree with you. It's a very good movie. That's right. I think that's... That's, you know, the best way to introduce it, really, Mm -hmm. that it is. I mean, you don't have to. And then uh, if they don't like it, they just don't know what a good movie is. (laughs) The swimming scene is, uh, I think, very, very well done. Beautifully from all directions, from the uh, 
director and the camera work, mm-hmm. you know, because there's an underwater camera, you see, that shoots uh, the creature around me. And mm-hmm. uh, so it's it's a very lovely scene, really. <laughs> good 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 movie scene <laughs> <laughs> now you've obviously done a lot more than just creature and i've been watching a lot of your westerns lately do you have a favorite western that you were in oh gosh i think it has to be bend of the river because that's james stewart sure when you work with james stewart that's top of the drawer you know <laughs> so uh, that may be the favorite but i enjoyed all of them really uh-huh. and i enjoyed riding you know and i i liked riding on a horse so When I got to ride, I thought that was a lot of fun. (laughs) I have to ask, did you prefer wearing the gowns in the westerns or the bathing suit and creature from the Black Lagoon? (laughs) I liked them both. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they're fantastic. I love the films. I also just recently watched Underwater City for the first time. What can you tell me about that movie? Well, we were wet most of the time. (laughs) Fair enough. It makes sense with a title like Underwater City, right? But uh, it was uh, it was fun to make it. It was yeah. interesting to make it, uh, and uh, I enjoyed swimming underwater, learning to swim underwater well. And everybody was uh, it was a very good cast and crew. So it was once again a very pleasurable experience. The autobiography came out a couple of years ago. What was the title of it? The Lucky Southern Star. <laughs> Reflections from the Black Lagoon. And this is a book that I truly wrote myself. I wrote it out in longhand first, really. Uh, And uh, so I'm very pleased that we've had such a good reaction to it. I do think it's a pretty good book, and we've got a lot of pictures in it, too, so that people can see scenes from different movies and so on and so forth. So anyway... I'm delighted that we've had such good response. This is a book that I was given as a Christmas gift. It's filled with so many wonderful stories and photos and has actually pointed me in the direction of some of your other films that I wasn't aware of. So I think any fans need to see the book and they can buy it through your website. Is that right? We are at www.julieadams.biz, B-I-Z. <laughs> we'll make sure there's a link to that in the show notes over at monsterkidradio.net. I think everybody needs to read this if you're a fan of Creature or a fan of classic Hollywood because it's filled with so many wonderful stories. Uh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your compliments, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys the book who gets it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Again, to mention that book, it's The Lucky Southern Star, Reflections from the Black Lagoon. It's a really solid book. My wife gave it to me for Christmas a couple of years ago, and I learned a lot about her and her story and some old Hollywood stories. It directed me towards some movies in her filmography that I may not have checked out normally, either because I didn't know anything about them or, well, because I was so tunnel-visioned on Creature from the Black Lagoon. You know, it's a great book. It's a great read. And she was such a great guest. So from the bottom of my monster love and heart, Julie Adams, thank you for making the time to appear on Monster Kid Radio and for making this incredibly nervous creature from the Black Lagoon fanboy feel so comfortable chatting with you at the show. (laughs) 